In May 2015, there were changes made to the Poisons Act, and that was really to strengthen the control of chemicals that can be used to cause harm um, to members of the general public. Now, there are five areas um, that have been impacted by the change to this law. So the first one is in the licensing of regulated poisons and explosive precursors. So the changes have meant that um, a member of the general public can only purchase regulated poisons with a valid license. Uh, business to business sales and substances restricted to professional users are exempt from the licensing requirements. Um, another area which is affected is the labelling. Pharmacies are required to label regulated poisons and explosive precursors that are intended for sale to the general public with a specific statement, which is acquisition, possession or use by the general public is restricted. A further um, area that's impacted is suspicious, tr suspicious transaction reporting. So retailers of um, such poisons and explosive precursors um, above the concentration, the current concentration thresholds, are required to report suspicious transactions and significant losses and thefts to the anti-terrorism hotline. This requirement also covers business to business sales, whole tra wholesale transactions and the sale of products for home use. A further area that's affected is removal of registration requirements. So retailers of products containing reportable poisons are no longer required to obtain a license and register with their local authority. So local authority is no longer um, part of the um, regulatory uh, system. And enforcement. So the police are now responsible for enforcing the changes in the law um, and a new set of offences have been created. Um, the General Pharmaceutical Council will continue in their role as the pharmacy regulator and inspectorate body. So I'm going to go through each of these areas um, in a little bit more detail. So for those people um, or members of public who want to purchase a regulated poison for home use, they'll need to present a valid licence and a photographic ID. Um, the licensing doesn't apply to business-to-business -to -business transactions. A member of the general public wishing to obtain a license, they'll need to um, access an online application form and that's on the government website. Um, an explosive precursors and poisons license will cost an applicant about um, £39.50 and it's valid up to three years. Now again the applicant will be required to provide personal information including current address, date of birth and details of a photographic ID and detail the type and volume of the poison they intend to purchase and its use. So quite a lot of detail that needs to be incorporated within that application. The applicant will also need to undergo a background criminal, criminal and um, health suitability check. Um, those checks have been modelled on the process used by the National Firearms Licensing Management System and they'll be carried out by the Home Office and the police. The Home Office is the authority with responsibility for processing and issuing the licence, so the buck really stands with them. The Home Office will make a final assessment on the suitability of the applicant to use, store and possess the chemicals. Um, if in the case a licence application is refused, the applicant has the right to appeal the decision. Now, if a member of the public wishes to purchase a regulated poison, you as a pharmacist, what should you do? So, firstly, you need to ask the purchaser for their licence in a valid and associated form of photographic ID. Um, now, the valid types of ID refer to an EK, a UK or a European um, passport, a biometric residence permit or a UK driver's licence. All other forms of photographic ID are not permitted. So, you've got specific... Um, requirements there. You need to check whether the licence and the photographic ID match the purchaser. Uh, you need to check whether the customer is permitted to use, store or possess the substance they're attempting to obtain. So the licence has got all of those details so you need to double check across to the licence. You need to check whether the customer has exceeded the volume of the substance they're licensed to purchase. So again you need to look at um, what's already been recorded on the um, on the license of previous transaction and work out if they have any um, any more balance that they can they can purchase. Once you're satisfied that those steps have been um, met, you can make a supply and you record the details of the sale on the license. So an additional transaction, or if it's the first one, then the first transaction. You then need to record the details of the sale in a poisons register. Now, during the sale, you may wish to engage 
um, with the customer in conversation about their intended use for the product. And that's really to um, reassure you that um, the person is competent and they're going to be using it for the purpose that they have stated. It's not a requirement, but it, like I said, it may help you to determine the legit legitimacy of the purchase and, and verify the intended use. You can and must refuse the sale of a regulated poison to um, a member of the general public if the purchaser isn't able to provide a valid license and photographic ID at the point of purchase, if the license has been tampered or altered in some way and you suspect that the documents seem to be false, if the license is out of date and no longer valid, if the license and the photographic ID do not belong to the purchaser, Third-party sales aren't permitted under the circumstances. They're not permitted under any circumstances, sorry. So the person who is looking to buy the poison must have the specific ID and specific um, license that pertains to them. If the purchaser is attempting to obtain a substance that isn't on their license, um, then again, you must refuse. Or if they are exceeding the allowance of the substance that's written on the license as well, that must be refused also. You may wish then to contact other pharmacies in the area to inform them of the refuse sale um, and make them aware of a potential visit by that same person. But it's really up to the discretion of the, of the pharmacy and there's no re legal requirement for you to do that. Um, if a sale has been uh, refused or for any general inquiries about the sale of regulated poisons, um, you may want to explain um, if they wish, if that purchaser wishes to buy any of the regulated poisons or explosive precursors, they need to go back and apply to the Home Office for a license. Direct them to the website um, where they'll find the application form. Explain also that it's a criminal offence for a member of the public to use, possess or acquire these restricted regulated poisons above that particular concentration threshold without the valid license. So you're, so you're really um, justifying the refusal. Um, highlight that products containing high concentrations of specific um, chemicals such as hydrogen peroxide, nitromethane, nitric acid, sodium or potassium percolate and sodium or potassium chlorate are also restricted in this way. Um, and you may also explain that the licensing requirement does not apply to products that are already restricted to professional use only. If you believe that the purchaser is acting suspiciously or you have the information that the individual has made a previous attempt to obtain, obtain that regulated product without a license, then you should report the incident to the anti-terrorist hotline. Now, um, suspicious transaction, it's, it's subjective. Um, whether it's suspicious or not is going to be on a case-by-case -case basis and based on your um, professional clinical judgment, really. Um, but... Any of these indicators, which isn't exhaustive, could be a reference list. It might be helpful um, in identifying suspicious transactions. So if you think that, as I said previously, the customer has been previously refused from purchasing um, a reportable product, that may be suspicious. If they're presenting with a stolen license or have um, altered the license in some way. If the customer isn't familiar with the regular use of the product or with handling instructions, might ring alarm bells. Um, if they refuse alternative products or products with lower uh, concentration, if they insist on paying with cash, especially large amounts, and also if they request packaging or delivery methods that really deviate from what would be ordinarily advised or expected. So as I said previously, you should be reporting such suspicious transactions to the anti-terrorist hotline and the police counter-terrorism specialist will decide whether to um, investigate further. You should also re report disappearances and thefts. They're significant um, or unusual during the course of your business and they can't really be easily explained. You're not under any legal obligation to maintain um, written records of s suspicious transactions or disappearances and thefts. Um, but you would be assisting law enforcement if there was a police inv investigation into the incident. Um, failure to report such suspicious transactions or loss or theft is an offence liable to a substantial fine or in the most serious of cases, imprisonment. Um, however, enforcement action is only likely to be used in the most severe cases um, and it shouldn't deter you from selling these substances to the general public. In the case that all requirements are met and a supply is made from a pharmacy for regulated product, then um, there is a restriction that um, there needs to be a clear indication on the product by fixing the appropriate label and the label should say 
that acquisition, possession or use by the general public is restricted. Now for the enforcement of this, um, this new law, the police are responsible for its enforcement. The General Pharmaceutical Council will continue to have a role in inspecting pharmacies and associated pharmacy premises. The changes in the law mean that trading standard officers no longer have the power to inspect premises holding non-medicinal poisonous products and they're no longer required to assess the eligibility of businesses intending to sell these materials. There are offences and penalties, so the new laws have created the following criminal offences. So, offence number one is the importation, acquisition, possession or use of a regulated substance by a member of the general public without a valid licence. Offence two is about the sale or supply of a regulated substance to a member of the general public by a person without first verifying that the member of the general public has a valid licence. Failure three, um, it's failure to report suspicious transactions or significant disappearances or thefts of either regulated substance or a reportable substance. And offence four, it's failure to ensure the appropriate warning labels are fixed to the packaging in which a regulated substance is supplied to a member of the general public.